Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the refractive index. So put down today's title, it's going to be the refractive index. Right, before we do this lesson, make sure that you've watched my previous video on refraction and I've put it into the description below. So just make sure you watch that video before watching this one, otherwise it just won't make sense. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so before we get going, let's have a quick recap on refraction. Right, so refraction revision over here. So over here on the left hand side, I've got air and I've got uh, glass over here. So this is the boundary between the air and the glass. Hopefully we can remember that in refraction, so I'm going to draw a normal line over here. We can remember that the ray of light will uh, travel, yes, uh, imagine it's a straight line, hits the air. And what will happen is the path will change because look, we're traveling from air into glass. But there's a change in medium here. So what happens is this ray of light will be bent, look, over here. So look, it's changed direction. So look, it should be going along this path over here, but it's been now moved closer to the normal, this normal line over here. Right, so let's look on the right hand side. We've also got air and we've got diamond. Uh, so obviously we're going to have refraction again. So let's draw the normal line over here. There is my normal line over here. Uh, but today's question is the following. In which scenario will there be the most refraction? Is it when you're going from air into glass or from air into diamond? Which one do you think there will be the most amount of refraction? Well, the key thing is this. So we will notice that, uh, let's say it enters at the same angle once again. We will notice that air into diamond, there's a greater amount of refraction taking place. So we can see that the ray of light, the refracted ray, has now moved closer to the normal. The reason why is because diamond is going to refract the light more than the glass. That's going to be the reason why. Okay, so we know that diamond is going to cause more refraction than glass. Yeah, so diamond will cause more refraction than glass. The reason why is because, obviously, hopefully you know the properties of diamond versus glass, diamond is more optically dense than the glass. But we need to have a way of measuring the amount of refraction that takes place within a material. Because glass is a certain amount of refraction and diamond is a certain amount of refraction, but we can actually try and give them a value. This value is going to be called the refractive index of a material. So let's move on to define the refractive index of a material. The refractive index of a material determines how much the path of light is refracted within a material. So the refractive index of a material is simply determines how much the path of light is refracted. Uh, and the higher the value of the refractive index, the more the refraction. The lower the refractive index, the lower the refraction. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side, I've put down the following. A vacuum, the air, water, glass and diamond. Uh, just by yourself, just try and guess which one do you think the most refraction takes place? Well, hopefully you can identify that this one over here will have the most refraction. So as you go down this group over here, we can see that there will be the most amount of, so most refraction uh, uh, as you go down the group over here. Right, so the refractive index, all of these have a refractive index. Uh, I'm going to put them on the board first of all, and then you can, um, then I'm going to explain where I got them from. So the vacuum will have a refractive index of 1.000. Air will be 1.004, water is going to be 1.33 roughly, glass is roughly 1.45, and diamond is going to be 2.44. So these are going to be the refractive indices of these. So refractive index of the material. There we go, over here. So there we go, we have it over here. Right, now from here, I'm now going to explain where do I get these from, yes? Where do I get these values from? So there's a formula to work at the refractive index of a material. It is the following. The refractive index of a material is going to be the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light within the material. It has the symbol of lowercase n or eta. There we go. And that'll be equal to the speed of light in a vacuum. That will be c divided by the speed of light within the material. So there we go, v over here. Right, don't forget c is a constant, yes, that's the speed of light, so c is equal to 3 times by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Yes, that's the speed of light, which is the speed of light, the speed of light over here. Right, now the units, um, if you've forgotten the units, every single formula, this has the units of speed, meters per second, this has the units of meters per second, therefore, obviously, the re refractive index, the units, what will they be? Well, meters per second divided by meters per second, there'll be no units here. So there are no units over here. It's dimensionless over here. And that's the reason why over here, look, there are no units for all of these different materials. 
Okay guys, and look, you can actually visualize the simulation by simply clicking on the link. I've put it in the description below. You can see that, look, we've got the first material over here, which is going to be air. Second material is going to be glass. And look, on the right hand side, it tells you the refractive index. So look, the air is one, the glass is 1.5. And obviously, if I reduce the refractive index, look carefully, obviously there's less and less refraction. And look, obviously if both the materials are the same, there is no refraction occurring. But as I increase the refractive index of the material, there is a greater amount of refraction taking place over here. And look, it bends closer towards that normal. Excellent stuff. Okay, now from here, guys, let's try and use this formula and do a couple of calculations to see if we understand what we're talking about. Okay, take C to be 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second in air. The speed of light in a certain glass is 1.8 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is the refractive index of the glass? Well, let's write down the formula. The refractive index of the glass is equal to C divided by V. Yes, the refractive index of uh, the speed of light is 3 times by 10 to the 8 over here, divided by the velocity 1.8 times by 10 to the power of 8. Don't forget that's the velocity inside the material over here. So I'm going to get the value of 1.6. Uh, seven. There we go. And notice there are no units because it's the refractive index. Okay, right, let's do another one. The refractive index of diamond is 2.4. What is the speed of light within the diamond? Right, the refractive index of the material, n is equal to c divided by v. We know the refractive index of diamond is 2.4. Yes, uh, 2.4. Uh, what is the speed of light within the diamond? Uh, don't forget c is constant, so you're finding v right now. So therefore, V is equal to C divided by N, you know, eta if you want. So 3 times by 10 to the 8 divided by the refractive index of the material. It's going to be 2.4 over here. So 3 times by 10 to the 8 divided by 2.4. I'm going to get the answer of 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So therefore, guys, it's going to be equal to 1.25 times by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second over here. Easy stuff. And that's it for another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.